Get set for the $30,000 Candleton Challenge, brought to you by American Car Care Centers in conjunction with CN8 and the International Candleton Bowling Association. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to the Woburn Bowlerdrome. John Holt with uh, Dan Murphy, and a week ago, we got a new champ in uh, Sean Baker. Unbelievable. He's uh, surely the, the better bowl last week, and uh, as I mentioned at the end of the show last week, yeah, one-two pocket, he just annihilates the pins, and he had a shot at uh, Dave Hodge in that third spot at 285, it will show the top three, and uh, there you see it there. Uh, Jeff Perret still sits at the top. Bob Whitcomb and Dave Hodge got to be a little nervous with this guy balling. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if uh, Sean can make a run at that 285 total today. Of course, he'll have to uh, be one of the challengers. To meet them, we go over to Trina Fernandez. Trina? Thank you, John. I'm over here with Stu Bergman and John Zappi, who are both back in the house. Bit on already this season, and you're back again, Stu. Welcome back. I see you brought a little fan club with you today. Who do you have? I have my daughter, Allison, my daughter, Christy, my son, Josh, and my wife, Karen. Nice looking family over there. Thank now, you, the thanks. last time you were on, you won the Challenger match, and, and then you lost to Dead. Is that correct? Right, right, yeah. I bowled uh, Rich Hallberg, and uh, then I bowled Dead afterwards. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't that great, uh, but it was still fun to get on, so it was still a good experience. So. No shame in losing to Dead. No. Now, hopefully, you'll fare a little better today. How are you feeling? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, I just hope I can uh, stay focused and throw a good ball because John's a great guy and an awesome bowler, so I'll do my best. Speaking of John, let's head over to you, John. You've been on, what, four times already this four season? Four times, yeah, four times. And you hoping to make it into the final? Uh, I hope so. I'll give it a shot, but, uh, you know, you got to get past this first string first before anything, so, you know, hopefully I can throw a good ball. It's all about that head pen. That's it. You know, <laughs> head pen and pen, and that's it. All right, well, best of luck to both of you. We'll head back over to you, John. Trina, thanks. So, Sean, last week it appeared for a while in the uh, second game you may make a run at that 285 that Dave Hodge had, the third spot in the top two game totals. Are you aware of that number in your head? I know it's a group you want to be part of, but are you aware of it? Yeah, you can't help but be aware of it. You know, you try to forget about it and you try and just bowl and, you know, hope everything works out for you. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's there. Don't be surprised if he makes a run at it today. Good luck. Thank you. We're back with the Challengers match right after this on CNA. Once again, we're soaring with Ace, the American Car Care Center's Eagle and the mascot. Glad to have them as a uh, title sponsor again this season as we wind down this and two other regular season shows remaining as we get set for the uh, big championship in a couple weeks at Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill. But first, some business to attend to today in the Challengers match. Fitting John Zappi, pictured right there, versus Stu Bergman, the winner to take on Sean Baker. It's a one-game Challengers match, just 10 frames, better score advancing. John Zappi, the left-hander, open by dropping nine on lane 35. Leaves just a nine pin. A couple pieces of wood on either side. John from Quincy, Massachusetts. And he'll start with a mark. Well done. Spare in the first. John was on earlier in the season, had some success. Back again with us today. He'll fill it up with uh, some seven pins. Another mark. Two in a row. Super start. Oh, another ball has been with us numerous times. Stu Bergman. Stu for Millis. He'll open by dropping nine. The difference in this nine pin drop is the five. It's the five left up instead of the nine, as John Zappi had. Trying to match marks. Takes out the king pin for a mark of his own in the first. Take a look at Stu Bergman's family. Right in the front row to root dad on.
It's a fill of seven. Matches a seven pin drop by John Zappi. However, to match the second mark that John put up, he's gonna have to uh, deal with a three, seven, and 10. A couple pieces of wood behind the three, which may help. Oh, yes, he does get it. <laughs> well done. Two marks a piece. Not quite sure if the ball stayed in play for that seven pin or not, but let's take a look. Yes, the ball came back down and knocked down that seven pin. So we're knotted up at 27 plus the ball for each bowler. Here's a fill in the third for John. Right up the gut. Spread Eagle drops four. Two, four, seven, three, six, ten. It's the four and the seven. So two marks to start with open now in the third frame. Leaves one pin up. He's got a total of 40 through three. Moves over to lane 36. Number one string match, our sprint version of the show. And winner of this takes on our one-time champ, Sean Baker. Oh, big strike by John Zappi. They say he zapped them all. Spare, spare, open, then a strike. Now the stew coming off, a spare in the second. He'll fill it up in the third. Sporting that average of 115. And the fill is worth six. Good enough for a two-pin advantage through the second frame. Opposite a nine box by John Zappi, and he's going to try to uh, convert the one, three, six, and eight, trying to make it three marks in a row for Stu Bergman. Going by the head pin. Ten box. He's got a lead of three pins at 43, 40. Now, of course, opposite the strike in the fourth. Does he have an answer? Well, it's good enough for a strike, but leaves himself the eight and ten pins. Difficult spare. Got a couple pieces of wood. Should help. Better with them than without, I, su I suppose. Going to shoot at the ten pin, the piece of wood in front of that one, and see if he can get something from off the wall. The Back ten will go. Nine in the fourth. So he's up two, but John Zappi, of course, has the two fill balls coming off the strike here in the fifth. First half nets him six. Leaves the four horsemen over to the right. One, three, six, ten. Picks off the three. So it's a total fill of seven. He's in the lead by five. And an eight box when it's all said and done. Pushing the score to 65. Oh. How about that? Likes that lane. He does. Two strikes, last two boxes on a lane 36. In the one-two pocket and just scrambles all the 
pins for that second strike, his fourth mark of the match. Now to do. Oh boy, that looked as good, if not better than most shots they've either bowler has had. And leaves himself at seven, eight, and nine. Piece of wood in front of the nine. Almost like he's gonna have to go after like the ten pin was standing and clip that wood. What he does, it gets him just the nine, so seven and the eight remain in the back row. And that's a nine box, two in a row now. He's to 61, and he's opposite the strike in the sixth. Stu has been marked free since those two to begin things in the one and two. Opportunity now, one, three, six, ten. The wood rolling off just a little bit towards the channel on the right. It's only the three. So the difference right now, the two strikes in the fourth and sixth from John Zappi. And a big opportunity to pad his lead here in the seventh. Coming off the strike back in the sixth frame. Stu recently won his first Pro Tour event. Been on the Pro Tour for quite a few years and probably broke through into the winner's circle. Congratulations to Stu. So the first half of the fill gets seven. It leaves the uh, four, seven, and the nine. And uh, plenty of wood to contend with, too. There's good luck. Total of eight on the fill. And a nine box. So he's at 92. That lead stretch to 14 now. Well, he's back on that lane 36. Let's see uh, if he can throw another strike. It'll be three in a row on 36. Doesn't count for the strike pool, though. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> and he will not do it. We won't, have to, we won't have to double check well, the rule book. Yeah, I would probably would have given it to him. <laughs> Joe Cassio may have filed a complaint over that one. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Two, four, seven left for John. So a chance for a mark over that late 36. Been so good to him. And another mark. Bowling uh, very consistently. And that's uh, marked every time on lane 36. Been the hallmark for him. He now has a total of five marks. Four in that lane 36. Back to Stu. Seventh box now. Get six to go with the first ball. One, three, seven, eight. Oh, great shot. Keeps himself alive here. He's opposite a nine box. So that cuts the lead to 13. He can reduce it more with this ball. You see the replay off the wall for the seven and the eight pins. Hoping for the big healthy fill. Here we go. Oh, that's pretty big. Nearly all ten. Climbs to within four, and he can match the spear put up by John Zappi in the eighth by knocking down the five pin. Piece of wood out in front. Oh, a little high on it. He kind of threw his hands up in the air, but he was able to keep it in play. And a mark, three in a row. It's a four-pin advantage as both bowlers marked in the eighth, 102 to 98. Now to John Zappi, important fill as we start the ninth frame. Oh, big ball. Can't beat that. You see the strike on Spear, his sixth mark. Out of nine boxes. And three of them are strikes. And now he's on his uh, favorite lane. <laughs> oh boy, he put the ball in the pocket, but leaves himself to three, six, and nine. 
on the right with a seven pin, but a piece of wood is low on the red line, just below the, the right of the red line. He's got a shot of carrying the ball off that wood, and the wood taking the seven. Got a chance here. Oh, right between them. Total fill of eight, and last ball now for John Zappi. Misses to the right, so 138 is the score. That's a 40-pin advantage on Stu Bergman, who has two frames remaining. And working on a spare. And a wow. strike for Stu. Things just got considerably tighter thanks to that strike. Still trailing by the four pins. So he's going to need another mark because there you see the strike because John Zappi had an eight fill on his strike. So he's going to need another mark. Got a chance. Seven to start the fill. One, three, and six. Needs this. Oh. Can't get it. So close. If he knocks these two down, he'll, he'll be short a couple pins. But what a valiant effort by Stu Bergman going three marks in a row. And he does get both. Wow, super wow. tight finish. 138 136. Two pin win for John Zappi. That was some good bowling. So it's Zappi on to the championship. We're back with the start right after this. And we're back, all set for the championship match. John Zappi versus the reigning champ, who won last week. That'd be Sean Baker, who knocked off Bob Whitcomb. Glad you're with us on CNA, John Holt, Dan Murphy, and our CNA crew. As we wind down the regular season on the $30,000 Candlepin Challenge. Both these bowlers looking to crack that top three, of course. Final taping. And what a start from Chuck Baker. You know, last week I went over some of his personal stats, but I didn't realize what a great year he's having. Um, Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire has an Easter Sunday, a 20-game tournament, and he won that with a total of 27.08. Uh, you people do the math. That's 135-plus for 20 games. Wow. He also uh, was the runner-up in the uh, Lovering tournament in Maine. And that's where he hit his high five, 775. And he's also crowned this year Bowler of the Year on the WCBC Pro Tour. And how you get that is they have six tournaments, and they take the total for your best five. And uh, he came out on top, so he's Bowler of the Year of the Pro Tour as well. So he's having a terrific year, and he'd love to cap it off and being one of our top three bowlers for that final show in a few weeks. Spare on strike for Sean. Great start. Now to John. Championship match. And a spare from John Zappi. You see him splitting the one and the two pins, and the head pin goes down, clear down in the right hand corner for the 10. Dropping eight. How about a dropping 10? <laughs> Apparently, John Zappi is not intimidated by Sean Baker's no. resume this year. Hey, Sean, I'm still here, John <laughs> says. And here's he drops eight. Pin comes rolling back, clips the four into the two for the strike on spare. We're all knotted at 30, plus one ball for Sean, two for John Zappi. And it's a fill of eight. They keep falling. The one in the eight pin's left. Piece of wood in front of the eight, which is always good. You've got to be flush on the head pin. Drive it straight back with the wood. He may get away, get away with uh, just missing. But he's straight on it. Three in a row. No stopping him. Right where he left off. Ah. 
Ouch. Finally a little let up. Ouch. Didn't even steal the half Worcester and got just the two pin. How does that happen? Good <laughs> <laughs> well, recovery. bounced back with his pair. So he's open now in the uh, fourth. Fifty-eight through four. <laughs> now John coming off the strike in the second. There goes the lefty. Missing the head pin off to the right. Leaves himself a one, two, four, six, ten. No wood. Bill, a couple more. Total of seven. <laughs> that puts John some four pins behind Sean through three. And he is open in the third after Sean had the spare. Takes out eight, make it nine. Just the five pin, the king left. Chance for John's third mark. Yes, sir. They're going back and forth, these two bowlers. John owns that high single of 213. Powerful, explosive he nine really, pin drop. He really is. Just amazing a person can throw it as hard as he does and still be as accurate as he is. There's another mark. He has four over the first five, three spares in that opening strike. Phil Ball, the sixth. Phil, the four. Last time, just a one fill over there. He pulled the ball left again, threw his arms up like he may do that same thing. But he squeaked out four. Oh, he makes that recovery, though. Puts him at 81 through six. Now John Zappi with the fill in the fifth. Get seven to go. He's got the triangle, six, nine, ten. And a piece of wood next to the six, and I think it can cover the nine pin. We'll wait to see how deep it is. Looks like it should cover all three. There's another mark. Just like the competition, four over the first five. And we're all knotted up. John Zappi will take the lead, whatever he drops in this ball. Four horsemen plus the nine pin on the right. And converts that, so five of six. John Zappi's hot. Sean Baker nearly as hot. 
Take a look at the replay. Mark number five over the first six frames for John Zappi. We're back with more bowling right after this on CNA. Welcome back to Woburn. John Baker all set to go. He's locked up in a good one from challenger John Zappi. Four marks over six for Baker, five over the first six for Zappi. We've seen that pin before, the six, a rocking six this time. <laughs> if looks could knock down pins, that one would have fallen <laughs> over, just that. <laughs> it's fair. That's his fourth spare to go with that strike. See what he can do on the fill. Last couple fills, a one and a four. Better this time, the seven. Three, seven, ten. Couple pieces of wood next to and behind the three pin. He's going to have to use that three if he wants to convert for a spare. Got it. We have got two talented bowlers duking it out. A righty and a lefty. Yeah, you see the conversion of the three seven ten for Sean Baker. Recent streak at two in a row. Six marks out of eight boxes. Zappy now. That's a fill of eight. Has the four and the seven left. Trickier for a lefty, though. John very smooth when he delivers the ball. Trying to convert for his sixth mark. He does uses the wood to his advantage. The KG veteran he is. Double piece of wood. He was able to convert that for four consecutive strikes. And like I said, six marks out of seven boxes. Four consecutive spares. Did I say strikes? Four spares in a row. I wish it was four spares. Four. Four is a number. Four. I knew four was coming someplace. This is a fill. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> so an another box open, only the second for him over the first eight. 118. 10 pin advantage for John, temporarily anyways. And Sean's going to fill a spare. He'll, he'll cut into that lead. It's amazing. Through boxes, we only had four open frames for both bowlers, two each. So he fills with six. That's the one, three, seven, and eight to contend with. Gets just the eight. We mentioned how proficient he was on marks last week. I think his lowest fill were, were six, seven. Everything else is eight, nine, and ten. This week he's got a one fill, a four fill, and a seven and a six. So he's quite efficient this week, although he's thrown a lot of marks. Final box game one. One, three, nine, and ten. That leaves the seven and the ten. So it's nine to finish with. Pushes the total to 133 game one for Sean Baker. 
just above his average of 130. Well, John's leading by four through eight frames. Chance for him to build a sizable lead with a couple marks. This is the head pin to the left. Takes out seven. Time for Earl to take a look. Situation. Hope it's not a no-look pass this time. Because we can knock pins down. No, it's close enough for him to go all the way down, but still in play. Possible spare situation for John Zappi. Oh, what a shot. Got by the wood, clipped the head pin. Used the head pin to bounce the ball off that for the four and seven. Take a look. Great shot. Chance for him to build his lead. Here's the fill in the tenth. Disappointing. Increases it by by two, up to six pins, but he's looking for more, obviously. Oh, great recovery, <laughs> though. What an answer. Eight marks in ten frames. Plus the extra ball upcoming. He's got 140 plus this ball. Five more gives him 145, more than uh, halfway to the total of Dave Hodge at 285. And it's a 12 pin advantage for John Zappi. Game one in the books, game two to start next, right here on CNA. Our final taping on June 5th, this is the one to be at. That's absolutely, uh, you know, the top three. We've been building this all season long, and this is what all the bowlers are shooting for. Yeah, they like to win, but they want to get in the top three. $5,000 to the top man that day. Tape time is at 1 o'clock, but don't be fooled, folks. You should be there at least by noon. We expect a big crowd. So come join us. Pilgrim Lanes, Haverhill, Massachusetts, June 5th. All set for game two of today's championship match. John Zappi, the challenger, in the lead by some 12 pins, and he will go first, as is traditional here in the second game, up 145, 133 over Sean Baker. The lefty versus the righty. The challenger versus the champ. Coming off an eight mark game one is John Zappi. Open air, of course, in the first after we say that. Oh, you're just getting the open frames out of the way early. <laughs> it's a nine to start for John. No wasted motion in John's uh, delivery. Very smooth. Perfectly balanced when he lets that ball go. Six spin drop. One, three, seven, and ten remaining. Gets the head pin, but leaves the three on it. Well, he'll be open the first two frames, leading by a mere 12 pins. His game two total at 17 right now. Here's Sean, one last week, defeating Bob Whitcomb to take over the championship. Hoping to make it two weeks in a row this week. 
off the head bid to the left gets six to fall. At least the one, the three, and the four and seven. They're and gone. Mark. So an opening statement from Sean Baker, frame one. Plays it on the left-hand side. And ball breaking a little bit from right to left, so it was natural for it to break off the head pin into the two in the corner, the 4-7. Just six. Four horsemen left. One, two, four, seven. Not get the two. Got the one and then the four seven in the corner. So he's open in the second. In another encounter, though, he's opposite an eight box. Going to make it really close. And he does just that. How about three pins now for John Zappi? Nine pin advantage of the game for Sean, but he trails by three overall. Back to John Zappi. Frame three. On the head pin, but it gets him just four. Just drive it right through the middle. Two four on the left. Then he's got the three six nine ten on the on the right. I'm trying to split the two and the four. I'm sure. And he did it. Oh, that close. Fine effort by John Zappi. Final ball, third frame, 10 box, 27. Had only two open frames all of game one. Already three open here, game two. Go half of them stay. One, two, four, seven. Also the nine in the back row. Wood right in between the one and the two, though. I think if he splits that, it's going to deflect the ball. Well, after throwing eight marks the first game, he's going to be open the first four of this game but still holds a slim lead. That's nine. That lead may be in jeopardy now as Sean Baker steps back up. He is opposite at 10 box in the third. Misses to the left, still got eight to go. One and three hanging around. Misses again. Can't get that head fin. It's elusive. Got it that time. Ten box of his own. Keep pace. Yeah, matching 10 boxes. Now it's a nine up there for John Zappi already in the fourth. And there you go with a nine pin drop. Looking at the five pin. If he can get the king pin, it'll be a second mark of game two. Miss to the right. And all of a sudden, the pursuit of Dave Hodge and his 285 total has slowed. Yeah, I think both balls now concerned with the match. Very close. Two pins now for our challenger, John Zappi.
Here we go. Frame five. Nine of ten go down. Leaves the four pin. Deeper in the match you go, these pins start to look like pencils down there. No. Speaking of pencils, he'd like to erase that roll. <laughs> Are starting to, I'm starting to think that they have something to do next week and they don't want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf Bowl is missing some big opportunities to take control of the match. Neither can do it. And I always kid all the people I bowl with that once you miss a single like this, John's probably going to throw an 8 9 or a strike, make you feel real bad about missing the single because of the great fill you would have. So let's see if it works out. No, not this time. Spread Eagle. Two, four, seven, three, six, ten. Got four to go. Six remain. How the game can turn on you. Gets one more. That was the two. That's eight. In the sixth at 54, Sean Baker can just post a mark here. He'll slide into the overall lead. Oh, there's a big strike. That counts. That qualifies. So a spare back in the first, now a strike in the fifth for the reigning champ. Now there's the situation I was telling you about. He missed a single the box before. Racing a 10-pin advantage in those boxes by missing that single. But he's got the strike working, and he can take it to lead. Anything over two. Looking for the double. Leaves himself the three and the ten. Strike. Well done by Sean Baker, turning up the heat on John Zappi. Four boxes to go. We'll bring you the finish next on CNA. <laughs> Welcome back. Four frames to go. Sean Baker in good shape now. Spare on strike in the fifth and sixth frames. His lead in the game at 22 and now overall at some 10 pins. John Zappi's yeah. going to need to mark. Yeah, advantage Sean Baker right now, but you can't count this guy out. You'd think he would be due. He's open first six frames. He's got four remaining. He knows what he has to do. Takes out eight. Chance here for the spare. Three and five left. Got to be concentrating on the three pin. Got it. Not going down without a fight. Absolutely not. Oh, boy. Disappointing fill, though. That, Only three. Yeah, that hurt. Hit the hit head pin when he was aiming for, but just flush. Couldn't even s steal the spread eagle. Got the one, five, and eight pins, and got the spread eagle plus the nine left. Can he recover with a spare? No. So that's an eight box. The total at 75. And a big seventh frame for Sean Baker because he had a strike in the fifth, spare in the sixth, and now the fill to start the seventh. Gets it for seven. He 
wants to go right at this like the ten pin was standing. Hit that wood high on the right. Oh, what am I talking about? Ball came back. Knocks out the 4 7. There's two ways to make that Murphy's way and Baker's way. And Baker wins out today. Watch the ball come back. Unbelievable. <laughs> Three in a row now. And he fills it with nine. Good chance for a fourth straight mark. Unbelievable. You know how many times we've seen this the last couple of weeks. He, he looks like he's really struggling, and then all of a sudden he'll just tie marks together. Earl on duty once again. Wow, that was a little pirouette there. See the, the leg out, the arms out, perfectly balanced. <laughs> Unbelievable. Sean Baker trying to make it four marks in a row. Oh. And he knew that from the release. Yep. If he got that one, I think Dave Hodge might have been uh, sitting up and taking notice. Instead, it's 9 111. The total in this game. John Zappi led by 12 after game one, but game two has been a different story. Largely because Zappi is marked just once in the seventh. While Baker has marked four times, three times. That's seven more added to the total. 82 for John Zappi. Just not his game here in uh, game two. Four pin drop. See if they can finish with a mark and an extra ball. Close to another mark, but not today for John Zappi. Does pin out with 10 more to 92. That gives him a total of 237. And he is already officially cooked at this point. Sean Baker will add uh, two more frames to his score. Right up the middle. Wow, one and five. No, I find simply amazing. The last couple of weeks, I don't think we've had one half twister. Not that anybody's keeping track of such things. No. That's an interesting note. In fact, I think we've seen more Earl sightings than half twisters the last couple of weeks. I don't know how many people are happy about that, but. <laughs> Final box now for Sean as he uh, finishes up another championship win. And he'll get his final roll coming up. Next week's challengers uh, is our uh, Norm Pelletier from Peabody, Massachusetts, and Pete Iannuzzo, son of a Hall of Famer from Reading, Massachusetts. One of those will be taking on Sean Baker. 39 pin advantage in game two is the difference after being down 12 following the opening game. Sean Baker retains his championship. We're back to wrap it up from Woburn right after this. Weeks in a row for Sean Baker as champ and the two weeks left for he or anybody else to break into that top three now. You know, he hit 269 too and uh, he missed a couple easy ones. Uh, I think Dave still has to worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out next week and of course one week after that before our final show of the season. Sean Baker is back next week. We hope you are as well. For Dan Murphy and our CNA crew, I'm John Holt. Thanks for watching the $30,000 Candlefin Challenge.